What's up everyone, my name is Platinum Howler and today I'm bringing you my week 3 game of the IBL D-League versus Bright Lovely Manbird and his Fort Wayne Gastrodons. His roster is over on the right with his 2Z users being Zara Aura and Alolan Persian. Now Manbird here is replacing D-Train and his uh, St. Louis Bulus. This is going to be Manbird's second match played in the IBL so far. He played with uh, D-Train's original roster of 10 last week, uh, but this week he has made some transactions and he now has 11 Mons, so all 10 teams in the league now have 11 Mons on their team, which is the maximum. So originally, D-Train's team had uh, Zygarde 50% and Cobalion instead of Excadrill and Gigalith, which honestly I think was would have been, would have given me more trouble than Excadrill and Gigalith, so I'm pretty relieved about that. And then he also had Drapion, and instead now he has both Toxicroak and Kaladol to round out the full 11 Mon roster. One thing that was well documented about uh, D-Train's original roster is that uh, before uh, Manbird made these transactions, it didn't have a Fairy Resist whatsoever. And the only thing that's changed with that is now his only Fairy Resist is Excadrill. So, getting right into the team here, for the second week in a row, we are bringing a very, very offensive Sylveon with Choice Specs. Hyper Voice is really the only move that I need on a Choice spec set. Uh, the other moves are pretty much just filler. I have Quick Attack for priority in a pinch, and uh, Wish and Misty Terrain. Uh, never gonna. Very, I cannot see myself clicking either of those uh, while my Choice Specs are still on. But on the off chance it, the choice specs get knocked off by something like Mew, Superior, Alolan Persian, those are just some of the things on his team that can carry knockoff. Uh, if that happens, then Wish and Misty Terrain will be much more viable. Uh, I didn't want Wish Protect on this because uh, if I if I use Wish, I'm going to use it to heal up another one of my team members. I'm not going to use it to heal up Sylveon. Um, if Sylveon's in and if Sylveon's in, it's not gonna be trying, it's not gonna be trying to heal itself, it's gonna be trying to deal damage. Now Misty Terrain is on there uh, because one, it helps reduce the power of Charizard X's uh, Dragon type moves against everything except for Latias and Gyarados before it's Mega Evolved. And if I'm able to get it up, it will also prevent him from statusing everything but Latias and Gyarados before it's Mega Evolved. So uh, if if I manage to get Misty Terrain up, uh, and it's a very, it's a very like rare uh, situation where this happens, but if it does, that's why I have it. Next up, we have Skarmory. Uh, Skarmory this week is going to be specially defensive because it does not need any physical defense investment to take on the things that it's meant to take on. Excadrill and Gigalith, obviously, Excadrill cannot do anything to Skarmory at all. It, and it's, it really helps too that uh, 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 the Excadrill cannot use Z-moves. It's not a Z-captain, so it can't uh, try to break through my Skarmory with like Swords Dance and then Continental Crush or something. Um, so Skarmory's here to get rocks up. It's here to wall the uh, likes of Rabombi and Superior. Um, and then it's just going to whirl run things around and get chip damage on a lot of things on his team. Then it's holding an Aquaberry. Aquaberry can potentially help us live a hit from Charizard and whirlwind, whirlwind that thing out if it becomes too big of a threat. And we also have it to uh, eat a hidden power fire from either a Rabombi or a Superior and retaliate with a Brave Bird. Next up we have a pretty standard Mega Gyarados here. Um, Waterfall, Crunch, Earthquake is plenty good coverage enough for his team. Of course, uh, once we are Mega Evolved, we will have the Mold Breaker so we can hit the uh, Rotom Wash uh, with a super effective Earthquake. Uh, I have commonly seen uh, Rotom Washes carrying Shookaberry to take on uh, Mold Breaker Mons with Earthquake. Um, so if I don't see an item, I'll have to watch out for that. Uh, Crunch will still deal a decent amount of damage to it as well. Uh, of course, we have Dragon Dance to make sure that we're faster than everything on his team. So, this is an aggressive speed creep with the with the Gyarados. Um, I have to be jolly to make sure that I can outspeed a, a Zeraora. 
Um, but if I wanted to guarantee outspeed Zara Aura at plus one, I would need to have uh, 236 EVs in speed, if I'm not mistaken. But um, that's if he runs Jolly Max Speed Zara Aura, which is very, very rare. I don't really see that happening. So the speed stat that I have here is to outspeed a Zara Aura that's running just enough speed to force me to run a Jolly Gyarados. So for example, um, max speed Adamant Gyarados is 133 speed. So if he runs a speed stat of 200, he would still outspeed me even at plus one. So if, I'm, if I go to 201 speed after I set up a Dragon Dance with Gyarados, then I will be faster than that Zara Aura speed creep. Uh, in fact, I actually have a few extra points in speed because I had some leftover e uh, leftover EVs. So I should be able to outspeed a Zara Aura with a speed stat of like 203, actually, rather than a stat of 200. Next up, we're bringing Latias back after its uh, subpar performance last week. Uh, but we're bringing a very different Latias set uh, this time. Uh, it has uh, Dragon and Psychic uh, are pretty good coverage against this team, so we're bringing it as a choice Scarfer to guarantee outspeed a, uh, uh, a Zard X uh, even with a Dragon Dance up. So Draco Meteor and Dragon Pulse, which, whichever one I need for them, depending on uh, uh, how weakened the uh, Charizard is. Uh, Psychic hits this team pretty well, and then Shadow Ball is basically just there for the Mew. Um, if I need to 1v1 the Mew, I can spam Shadow Ball against it. Uh, eventually, I can get a special defense drop with the Shadow Ball, and that will help me take it on easier. But uh, aside from that, I don't really need Shadow Ball. I'll be clicking the other three moves the majority of the time. So just like week one against D-Willy, he had a Masquerade that could set up Sticky Webs, and we had to bring the Delmise to Rapid Spin those away. This time we see a Rabombi with Sticky Webs, so again we are bringing the Delmise to rapid spin those away. But uh, on top of that, Delmise has a pretty darn good offensive matchup in this game. Uh, it can take hits from almost everything. There are not very many mons that threaten this out. The two main mons that would scare out this Delmise are Alolan Persian and uh, Charizard X. Everything else it feels pretty comfortable uh, going up against 1v1. Power Whip hits things extremely hard. This thing will Oko a max defense Rotom Wash with a Power Whip. Earthquake hits Zara Aura and Excadrill pretty nicely. Also deals well with Toxicroak. Shadow Claw is mainly there for the Mew. And also it'll be able to hit uh, Rebombi and uh, Superior neutrally, whereas uh, my other two attacking moves are not very effective against both. We have the Lumberry on Delmise this week because Mew and Rotom Wash are both likely candidates to be carrying Will-O-Wisp and I do not want to be burned with this Delmise because I need my attack stat to do some damage. Don't want that being cut in half. Last but not least we have our Nidoqueen once again with the Pyapa Berry this week. Pyapa Berry will be able to reduce damage from an attack uh, attack from Mew uh, or as or, or it will also help against a uh, Rebombi with Psychic. Uh, this is the exact same spread as last week. It has the 84 speed EVs to creep a non-speed invested Rotom Wash, max HP and then the rest into uh, special attack. So we have Stealth Rocks on this as well as our Skarmory because you want to make sure that the Charizard X takes rocks damage every time it comes in. Uh, otherwise it's just too much of a threat without it taking rocks. I could have chosen to go for rocks with Nidoqueen and then spikes with the Skarmory, but uh, I just decided to go double rocks instead because double rocks, the rocks are mainly for Charizard and then also it'll be able to chip down the likes of uh, Rabombi more because Rabombi comes in and it's weak to rocks and then also uh, Rotom Wash because uh, it having Levitate it doesn't take any damage from spikes at all. Uh, I see now that it has uh, poison point instead of sheer force, so we're gonna change that. We definitely want sheer force on this uh, Nino Queen. Earth Power and Sludge Waves are stabs, hit his team pretty well, and then uh, Shadow Ball is gonna be for uh, Mew and also Claydol because Claydol uh, is immune and resists 
uh, our main stabs with Nino Queen, so Shadow Ball would be nice against that. I hope I did well in cutting down the team builder portion of this video. I think the uh, first two weeks they were a bit longer than I would like to than I would like them to be. So, um, without further ado, let's get right into the battle. Here we are back with the battle, and looking at Manbird's team, we we don't see the newly acquired uh, extra drill plus gigalith sand combination. Uh, that makes a lot of sense considering I have a Skarmory, Skarmory walls, those two mods pretty well, pretty much shuts them right down. Uh, we don't see the Alolan Persian, uh, which if the Alolan Persian was here, that might have been the only scenario where I didn't just let my Sylveon die to whatever was able to kill it off at the beginning of the match. Um, but it's not here, and that also means that Zero Aura is his only possible Z user. Uh, no Alolan Persian to go for a Z parting shot or anything like that. Uh, we see the Rotom Rosh, which I'm thinking is most likely going to be his lead, and uh, Sylveon matches up really well against that. Uh, we also see the Zard, which is, uh, because Excadrill is not here, uh, regular Charizard is his only Fairy Resist on the team. After it Mega Evolves and becomes Dragon Flame, he will have no Fairy Resists. The Mew is his only potential Rocker that he has brought. Uh, Rabombi is here as well, and I think that has the potential to have Sticky Webs. Uh, but he doesn't have a rapid spinner, so if he uh, has defog, he's going to be uh, defogging his own webs away. And then we see the Toxicroak, his newest acquisition, which uh, actually, with the right coverage, can be a threat to my team. Uh, Sucker Punch priority for Latias, so I'm going to have to make sure that I keep my Latias relatively healthy. Um, and not having a Fizz Def Skarmory makes Toxicroak actually decently viable. Uh, in this game if he has uh, coverage on his set for my Skarmory. So like I've already said, I'm going to lead off with my Sylveon right away, my choice specs Sylveon. The only two things that he has that he could lead with that could potentially force me out would be the uh, Toxicroak and a uh, Zera Aura with uh, Gigavolt Havoc. Uh, but of course he does lead with the Rotom here and he's gonna go for a Hydro Pump on the first turn, which doesn't do a whole lot to my Sylveon being as specially, naturally specially bulky as it is. So I'm gonna go for a big Hyper Voice here and that actually does a little bit less than I expected it to. So this Rotom definitely has a lot of uh, special defense investment for sure. So uh, because he stayed in and went for a Hydro Pump, I'm gonna be able to click Hyper Voice again and do some uh, big damage to this incoming Charizard. Uh, because that does less than half, I know that he has some combination of HP and Spinef investment, uh, either that or I just got a low roll because I know for a fact that Specs Hyper Voice should Oko this Zard. Um, so now that the Zard is in here, it has to go for a Flare Blitz to uh, guarantee knock out my Sylveon, and I'm okay with that. I'm gonna let Sylveon go down. It did its job. It brought both Rotom Wash and this Charizard under half. So now that this Charizard is in here, I can bring my Gyarados in for free, get an Intimidate on this Zard, which is really, really important. Uh, set this Charizard down to minus one attack, and now I can go for a Dragon Dance against this Charizard and uh, potentially do I'll do some big damage to his team once again and just start steamrolling, really. Uh, pick off, uh, continue building off of Sylveon's momentum early in the game. So. He did have the potential to go for a Dragon Dance alongside my Dragon Dance, but I was okay with that because he was already at minus one, and if he Dragon Danced up, uh, he would have only he would have just got back to neutral for that Dragon Claw. So uh, he just chose to drag to uh, go for a minus one Dragon Claw against me as I get up my Dragon Dance. I outspeed and go for Crunch. So now we're at five five, and he's gonna bring in this Toxicroak, which is on an air balloon, and I'm like, oh great. I was thinking I was going to be able to blow through his team, but now he has dry skin, is immune to my uh, other stab and crunch, and I can't hit this with an earthquake. So, knowing that a fighting move is coming on this turn for sure, I go into my uh, Skarmory so I can get my rocks up. And I know this is going to bait in the Rotom again, uh, and I have a, a couple decent switch ins to this Rotom. Um, on this turn, because he could go for a Will O Wisp. Uh, I am going to go into my uh, Latias. I do not want my Delmice to get burned. Yes, 
It has a Lumberry, but he can go for the Will-O-Wisp again after I uh, eat up my Lumberry and actually get the burn on my Delmise. So I don't want that. I go into my, my Choice Scarf Latias here, and I try to make a prediction that he's going to go into the Mew. Uh, but this was, this was just an awful, awful, awful prediction on my part. Um, this is a very Spideff Rotom, and he's now going to be able to defog my Rocks away. I 100% should have clicked Draco Meteor on that turn. Tried to knock out this Rotom so that he couldn't get that defog off. So now being locked into Shadow Ball, I don't want to stay in. I don't want to be in here locked uh, locked into Shadow Ball against anything other than the Mew. So the Mew is definitely not coming in here. But he actually, I, as it turns out, I would have actually preferred staying in on that turn because that is a Sash Rabombi that switches in. Um, uh, the Rocks do not break his Sash. I don't stay in and go for a Shadow Ball to break his Sash, but I do bring the Delmize in that for that threatens this uh, Rabombi out. Zero Aura comes in as I go for a Shadow Claw. Shadow Claw was very spammable against his team. He didn't have a resist to it, so I can click Shadow Claw twice uh, and knock this out. Barely holding on uh, against that Life Orb knockoff. Uh, I do know uh, that that had no chance to kill. That was uh, that was not a damage roll. I guaranteed survive that hit, but uh, I am very low now, so I can't really do anything else with this Delmize. I did get a kill, uh, which is what I expected it to do because of its uh, very good offensive matchup in this game, but Rabami now comes in and I bring in my Needle Queen instead of my Skarmory because now on this turn I want to bait in the Mew because I have my Pyapa Berry which I just eat. I'm thinking he's going to switch out into the Mew so he can take out, so he can take on this Needle Queen. Uh, I can get my rocks up as he switches out and then break his Sash when he comes back in. But he's actually going to stay in and pop my Pyapa Berry with a Psychic. I get my rocks up on this turn, and now that I see that he is staying in, I'm going to go for a Sludge Wave, knowing that I can take another Psychic, um, but I can't take another Psychic after he goes for a Quiver Dance here. Uh, plus one Psychic is going to be able to knock me out. And I think this was a misplay on my part by letting my Needle Queen go down. I was a little paranoid that... Uh, a Psychic plus a Hidden Power Fire, uh, even through my Aquaberry Skarmory would be able to knock me out and then I would basically just lose to this Rabombi. Uh, but that was that was foolish of me, like Skarmory was going to be able to take this on no matter what. Uh, this was the only thing he had left that I needed Skarmory for. There was no reason to let my Needle Queen go down there. Uh, instead, I lose my Needle Queen and Turns out he doesn't even have HP Fire on this Rabombi. His best move to hit me was Moonblast as I kill him off with a Brave Bird. And now the Rotom is going to come in and go for a Volt Switch against me. Uh, just going to sack off my Skarmory because with the Rabombi down, I don't really need that Skarmory anymore. And at this point, it's a uh, 2v3 for me. All I have left is my uh, Gyarados here, which I need to bring in here against the Mew to try to weaken this for a... A potential Scarf Latias sweep, um, but he is actually faster than my Jolly Gyarados. I'm not a max speed Jolly Gyarados, but um, if he had EV'd himself to be uh, to be faster than an Adamant Gyarados, then I should have been able to outspeed there and pop his uh, Culver Berry uh, before him burning me, so that crunch does absolutely no damage at all. Um, but yeah, so this that that was also really unfortunate that I wasn't able to outspeed him because uh, if I was and he missed and he uh, happened to miss a uh, Will-O-Wisp, then I would have been in a very good position. But he reveals U-turn on the Mew, so he's going to U-turn out and sack his Rotom, and the Mew is going to come right back in now, and he can go for a Roost and recover a small amount of health before going for a U-turn and eventually killing me off. Uh, the, I, there's no sense in going for Dragon Dance here, I just need to, uh, well actually Dragon Dance on that turn would have been a good play, um, but I'm just trying to attack this Mew that's in front of me and weaken it as much as I can. Like he could have easily gone for a U-turn on that turn, and if he did, I would have liked some good damage on the Toxicroak. Because my Gyarados is pretty weak at this point, he could have picked me off with any form of priority on the Toxicroak that he wanted. but. He does recover a little tiny bit of health by going for Roost on that turn and then U-turning afterwards. So the Toxicroak is now coming in 
and he actually he plays this really well because uh he reveals fake out on this turn so he brings the Toxicroak in a situation where he can fake out and get chip on my Latias. Uh, before switching back out into the Mew, he can now bring the Toxicroak back in later and go for another fake out to get some uh, more chip on my Latias. Uh, at this point, he doesn't know that I'm Scarfed, so I'm thinking if he wants to stay in and just go for a Sucker Punch right now, then I need to go for a Psychic and ensure this KO on the Toxicroak because um, I I don't think that I can win this game at this point uh, uh, with uh, Choice Scarf Latias against uh, Mew and Toxicroak. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I could potentially knock out the Toxicroak and just settle for a 1-0 loss. Uh, but he does actually make the switch into the Mew. He is able to live two Psychics. Uh, in that scenario, I would have needed a combination of a crit and or a spadef drop. Uh, I don't get either. He roosts up and U-turns out now, and I am low enough to the point where he can easily pick me off with a Sucker Punch, and Manbird is going to take this game 2-0 as we fall to 1-2. We suffer our second loss in a row. GG to Manbird. He played a good game and, for the most part, prepped pretty well against uh, Mega Gyarados and was able to gain some good momentum off of that. So his links, his channel links and Twitter links, all of that stuff will be in the description. Go check him out and watch his side of this battle. But for me, looking back on this game, I am pretty, I am pretty disappointed with myself. I was very confident in this matchup going into the match and coming away from this with a 1-2 record is really disappointing. There were a number of key misplays that I made in this game that ultimately cost me. Uh, the first was not going for a Draco Meteor against the Rotom Wash uh, when I first brought in my Latias. Uh, again, no reason to predict a Mew there and lock myself into Shadow Ball, which is the weakest move I had on my set. I had to go for a Draco to prevent him from potentially defogging there. Um, because he was able to defog and... Uh, he was able to preserve the sash on Rabombi. Uh, Rabombi was able to uh, knock out. He, he was able to one v one my Needle Queen with his Rab my Piapa Berry Needle Queen. He was able to one v one with my Rab with his Rabombi because I wasn't able to break its sash. Um, I just played the Latias horribly again for the second week in a row. I was hoping that I could bring Latias and it would uh, redeem itself after last week, but that wasn't the case. Letting Needle Queen die to Rabombi, uh, huge misplay as well. Like, I had the Skarmory there for one reason, and that was to make sure that I didn't get swept by a Superior or a Bombi. And I could have definitely saved my Needle Queen for coming in later against the uh, Mew, potentially living a uh, Zen Headbutt, which is the psychic move that he had. Uh, on his Mew, uh, potentially living a hit from the Toxicroak. Um, he didn't have Earthquake on his Toxicroak, uh, so he, he he had nothing to hit me on his Toxicroak outside of uh, uh, Sucker Punch. That was Sucker Punch was literally his best move to hit my Nino Queen. So I could have 1v1 that Toxicroak still with my Nino Queen very easily. Instead, I let it go down to Rabombi, and that cost me the game. Uh, Another thing that's not necessarily a misplay, but kind of just looking back a sign that I need to play more aggressively at times. Um, when I got my Delmize in against the Rabombi, uh, I should have made a fair assumption that he was going to be uh, sashed on that Rabombi, which he, which he was. So there wasn't much reason there for me to go for a Shadow Claw, even though like... Uh, everything on his team uh, like even though he had no resist like nothing was going to take a shadow claw well um but knowing that he could have been sash going for earthquake there instead of a shadow claw would have been a good play because his best switch in was his best switch in honestly was the zara aura anything else anything else would have died to a shadow claw so making that prediction and going for an earthquake Judging by that damage roll on the Shadow Claw, I know that that would have been an Oko on that Zero Aura. I wouldn't have had to stay in and go for another Shadow Claw and take all of that knockoff damage. And then I could have... Uh, Delmice could have put in so much work if I could have... If I had just made that prediction, that simple prediction, and gone for an Earthquake against the Zero Aura and knocked it out. 
And above all, the biggest choke of this game for me was not realizing that Mold Breaker on Mega Gyarados ignores Toxicroak's dry skin. He was thinking that an Air Balloon Toxicroak would be a great response to Mega Gyarados because of dry skin. He's immune to water type moves. He resists dark type moves. And with an Air Balloon, he has a one-time immunity to a ground type move, so he could come in and force out my Gyarados. Except for the fact that Mold Breaker ignores dry skin. I could have waterfalled that thing and had a, probably had a very good chance to knock it out because Toxicroak is not the most bulky mon in the planet. So, just so many mistakes in this game that if one of them had been different, I could have potentially won this game and instead I lose 2-0 my second game in a row and now I'm one and two and I'm on massively on the back foot and I'm really not happy about that so uh, anyways I'm gonna wrap up this video now if you enjoyed it make sure you leave a like and a comment down below and subscribe to the channel for future IBL and other videos um, next week we are going up against uh, Gravy and his Los Angeles Valientes and uh, we need a win pretty badly, so we're going to go all out for uh, a win next week and hope to bring ourselves back up to the 500 mark. So, we will see you then.